I was reading through the comments on my retrospective video and I saw a number of comments from you guys saying that you were really excited to reinstall the game or even to play it for the first time, which shout out to those people who are playing it for the first time now. End War is a little bit different than most other real-time tactics or real-time strategy games, so I figured I might as well go ahead and share some tips with you all if you're out there replaying it or you're playing it for the first time. So these are five tips that I consider beginner tips that everyone should know. And be sure to stick around to the end of the video because I'm doing that annoying YouTube thing where I say that there's a bonus tip. Or you could just click on the timeline and jump around to see all the tips without actually watching the video. It's fine. It's not like I put in the work to edit and make this video fun and entertaining for you or anything. I ask you how you are, you just have to say that you're fine when you're not really fine, but you just can't get into it because they would never understand. The first tip is the camera position. The default camera for End War is incredibly cinematic. It's a selling point and it's one of the best features of the game. There's so much detail to be seen and it's incredible to be that close to the action. Unfortunately, that default camera setting is also holding you back from being your best self. The camera being that close to your units really limits the amount of the battlefield that you're able to see. On the Xbox and the PS3, while in a battle, go into the menu, go to the camera settings and change the camera height to high to get a better view of the battlefield. For PC players, just roll your mouse wheel to zoom out to any zoom level that you want. So I guess when they were making their changes for the PC version, they had one good decision. The second tip is for force attacking. The game doesn't do a very good job of telling you about this, but you actually don't need the hostile number indicator in order to deal damage to an enemy. You can order your units to attack structures, uplinks, barricades, hell, even the ground. Force attack is incredibly useful for directing your artillery fire. You can use force attack to hit enemy artillery firing from behind buildings. You can use it to pummel riflemen that are hiding in trees, or you can even use it to destroy barricades and obstacles to open up new paths for your units to navigate. If if you're having trouble with the Siege of Moscow, simply order your artillery to force attack the walls on the east side of the square. When the walls are destroyed, it'll clear a new path for your units to enter. To issue a force attack order on PC, click this button in the corner or hit the F key and then left click on your target. For the console players out there, simply double tap the A button on your target. Force attack can also be used in the sit rep. Back in the day, we'd use the sit rep and the force attack to target enemy artillery that was hidden behind buildings or tree lines when we otherwise couldn't target them. Grouping units. Group your units into task groups for easier organization. I do this all the time to quickly select both my artillery units and direct them to both fire at an enemy. It's also really useful for your gunships to have them fly as a group. If you're setting up a two-pronged assault, Group your units into the two task forces to more easily keep track of each side of your attack. To group a unit on the consoles while holding the left trigger, select a unit, hit up on the D-pad, move to the next unit, and again hit up on the D-pad. Now that both units are selected, hit Y to create a group. On the PC, you can use Control plus left click on the units that you wish to group and then hit Control F1 to create the group. At least that's what it says in the manual. I haven't been able to get it to work, but be careful. This will change the unit number that's assigned to your unit. To use the group, select any unit in the group, hold the left trigger, and press the A button. If you're using voice commands, you can use the command task group to select the group. Gunships are your main way to scout the battlefield with an airborne camera. If you pay close attention to my videos, my camera is almost always locked to my gunships and I rarely switch to the camera of my ground unit. This is because I want to have the best overview possible as I make my decisions and issue my orders. Being able to watch what the enemy is doing as I give my orders allows me to stay one step ahead of them. Practice moving your gunships in and out of scouting positions without using voice commands. Improving on your ability to keep your gunships alive and maintaining your ability to scout the battle field will greatly improve your chances of success. Use this in combination with tip number two to use your gunships to find targets for your force attack. And that brings us around to the last tip. Tip number five, deep striking. Deep striking is an upgrade that riflemen get very early on and it allows you to direct a rifleman's deployment chopper to deploy them anywhere on the battlefield. This is incredibly useful after DEFCON has been triggered to quickly secure an uplink. Just be careful not to send your men headfirst into danger. The deep strike upgrade must first be purchased in the battalion menu and any rank of rifleman can utilize it. To use the deep strike ability, you need at least 10 command points, eight command points if you're already in DEFCON. You must first deploy a rifleman unit, then select the unit's card while it's still flying into the battlefield. Select the point on the map you 
you want them to move to and issue a move order. This has to be done before the riflemen begin their deployment animation. This is easiest to do in the sit rep where you can quickly select any point on the map. Otherwise, you need to either have vision of the target or utilize the voice commands. Remember, it takes time for the deployment chopper to reach its destination. All of us who played in the theater of war days can share in a little bit of collective PTSD as we remember our high level riflemen having their deployment chopper airstruck out of the sky. I hope you enjoyed those beginner tips, and if you did, be sure to subscribe for more. If you're interested in joining a community to chat about End War and learn more from more top players, check the link in the description below to join the End War Revival Discord server. Now onto that bonus tip I promised. Practice playing without mission support. Relying on mission supports like airstrikes, electronic warfare, and force recon is one of the easiest ways to spot a newer player. Instead, really take the time to learn the combat chain and practice backfilling your units before they go down. Those four command points that you've spent on that airstrike would be much better spent deploying a unit that can help counter enemy units in multiple engagements. Learning how to be prepared to counter the enemy's counterattack will help you to consistently achieve victory. And that's going to do it. Thanks again for watching. I'm Ice Cold Snake. See you next time.